guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We are out in the garden today instead of the studio because it's gorgeous out. We've had a down shift in temperature at 66 right now. I'm using a pillow as my table for my computer and it actually feels nice, like a little bit of a blanket. And I have coffee instead of my ice drink. Ooh. I know, I love it. The evenings have been so beautiful. Like, the type of evening, evenings that you don't want to have end. Yeah. Like the kids are out here. It seems like the mosquito pressure has gone way down and it's just so pleasant. This is like the time that I live for Yeah. out in the garden. Uh, and our 10 day, the highest temperature is 91 and the rest are like mid to high 80s. So it's just gonna, I think, get better and better. Anyway, also there's some things, fun things happening right now. In fact, I just posted a story on Instagram. The crew is here starting to install the brick walkway from our front, like our formal front entrance out to, it'll kind of connect to, like it'll shoot you out to the cut flower garden or right. the parking area. And so I'm really looking forward to that because I felt like I kind of needed that there to start developing that flower bed. It'll give me some structure, I think. Mm -hmm. So anyway, exciting things. We'll show you uh, updates as we go along there. Uh, so let's just jump into the videos from this last week. The first one was a tour of the Butterfly Garden and Hartley Greenhouse update. Um, so everything is just looking really pretty right there. I think everything else is feeling the cooler temperatures and it, everything's just improving so much. There's a airplane, hold on. I forget about all the noise that happens when we're outside. Yeah. The studio is so like... You don't hear any of that stuff. Uh-uh. Anyway, everything just is looking nicer now that it's cooling off. And so I wanted to show you that area in general, the brick raised bed, the butterfly garden is just so full. And these sunflowers, even since we filmed that video, have um, like, I can see them from here. There's tons of flowers open. And it's something that I was just talking to, so who was I talking to last night? But I was talking about how that was such a fun, I'm so glad I planted those without even really thinking about the impact it would bring to that area. But it provided a visual block and it made it look more um, filled in. You know, we, we removed so much from that area and it looked so bare and stark, but that little bank of sunflowers that cost me, what, a dollar to plant, you know, worth of seeds was just a really, I'm so happy that those went in there and I didn't even really think about how much they would impact it. Anyway, uh, Stephanie said it felt like being a kid in a candy store, getting to see both magical places in your garden. Part of the charm is your appreciation of getting to make it so magical and live out your dream. I'm truly happy for you, Aaron and the children. Our world is great and you two color it beautifully. Stephanie, thank you. That's, that's really sweet. And I do feel like I'm living out a dream. It's weird. It's weird. Like I look out and I'm like that Hartley, how is, how is that? Here. That happen? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you have these things that you think, oh, you know, one day, maybe when I'm retired and I've worked my whole life and saved up my whole life, I will be able to do something like that. And it's just like, I can't believe we had the opportunity to do it at this point. And what a wonderful addition it's been. I, we're not even using it yet. Like it's still yeah. like, well, it's such a beautiful thing to have in the garden, even is. if you're not using it. It's yeah. just, it's a really pretty you know, thing to look at. I think too, that I have more appreciation for the gazebo now too, because it is installed down in the park. We haven't done uh, we should run down there at some point yeah, this we week. Um, I, they still have it kind of like taped off, right? Mm -hmm. Like caution tape. Um, and they've got the area kind of excavated around it, but they did get it put up and it looks beautiful. Like it didn't look that, I mean, it was a nice structure, but it didn't look like it fit our garden. It looks like it fits that area down there, which makes me so happy. Um, anyway, uh, Eleanor said, I noticed drain pipes at the corners of the Hartley. I presume these are for roof rain runoff. Where does, does the water go? Well, straight into the ground, really over there. We'll probably dig a hole on like each side and, and try to send the water kind of away from that area. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, uh, we don't get a whole lot of rain, so it's not going to be an issue either way. Yeah, we are going to bury a large, like it's a tank of some kind, like a drainage tank for the sink. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be a tank or more uh, it's like just a barrel. like a big hole in the ground with a bunch of gravel. No, Eddie was telling me about, it's like a, it's some kind of a barrel thing hmm. that you Where fill with gravel. Go? What's that? Where does the water go once it it's... drains out? I don't know if it's like a perforated. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's know. just perforated and filled with gravel. I think so. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. So that will be on the northeast corner. It'll be off. We'll dig a big hole right there um, so that we can. That's our drain runoff for the sink. I won't be doing any like big things like that you would need a disposal for, you know, like big chunks of things. It's just basically to rinse hands, do small garden projects and then 
you know, when we're entertaining in there, if we have like a little cocktail set up or whatever, we will have water there. It'll be potable water. So we can, it'll be, I was gonna say edible water. <laughs> Atomic Allison said, what's a knot garden? So it's actually spelled K-N-O-T, not garden. And it's like a, I don't know what the actual definition. Let me see if there, I could actually find a definition that would be much more eloquent than mine. Hold on. A knot garden is a garden of very formal design in a square frame consisting of a variety of aromatic plants and culinary herbs, including, and then it gives you a list of stuff. Um, but I kind of want to do a small scale knot garden. I think that would really lend itself nicely to that area around the Hartley. Valentina said, what is an HVAC or however you write it? So HVAC just stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Um, we had a couple of different options for the Hartley. Uh, one would be using a mini split, which is like a unit on the inside and then a unit on the outside. Mm -hmm. We have one for our studio and ours in the studio is uh, installed. I don't know how high up it's installed. Do you know? It doesn't really matter, right? But they're usually installed yeah. high up. It's it's probably like a good eight, seven or eight feet. Yeah. Maybe eight. Yeah. I, it's had, a to get, I had to get a ladder out to yeah, uh, it's paint pretty around it. Yeah. And then, you know, there's the tubes and cords and stuff. <laughs> I don't know how it works. They go out the back and then go into a unit that's outside, like yeah, a small AC air, unit. Yeah, AC unit. Um, and so that was one option. The second option was to duct in the air, which is what we decided to do. And the reason we decided to do that was because one, it's like you're putting in a Hartley. Let's just go all the way, you know, and make sure that it's like, no, we're not taking up any space with that kind of uh, infrastructure. And I've seen mini splits in uh, other Hartleys. And I think our eyes just kind of brush over it because we know it's kind of, it's a necessity here where we live. Um, maybe not in more mild climates, but I didn't even really note it as like, oh, that's a bummer, you mm -hmm. know, kind of a deal. But it would have taken the one we needed for this size of unit and with our temperatures, it was pretty big. Mm -hmm. I think it was five and a half feet wide. Right. And it would have come out and like taken up a foot of square feet. I don't want anything taking up any square <laughs> footage in that. Well, it uh, is Hartley. precious square footage. It really is. When you put in a structure like that. Yeah, and we just thought, you know, the floors aren't in, it's all a raw space, you know, still. So we can still go that route and have the ducks, you know, brought in and then that will give us the ability too to put the unit further away from the Hartley. That was another thing. I really wanted gardens and beautiful things around it. I don't want an AC unit just plunked right outside it. Um, I asked the guy how far away we could put the unit uh -huh. and his response was, well, how much money you got? Oh, geez. <laughs> well, it's not gonna go that far away. I yeah. don't think. I was actually thinking like, what would be, make the most sense? Probably somewhere right around where the butterfly garden is. Mm -hmm. Just getting it away a little bit so we can like house it or you know somehow shroud it, but it's not right up against the building. You can shroud it as long as you don't put things within one foot of it. I, think. I was thinking like some kind of like a at least to pretty fence or something like that's away from it yeah. and keeping plant material away from it as well. But anyway, we'll see how that kind of shakes out. I'm not really sure, but that's really the last piece we're waiting on before we can install the floor. Um, and then we can do water and electricity because that's roughed in already. We can hook all that stuff up later, um, even if we didn't get to it this year or whatever, which we still hope to. But um, yeah, we can do the floor as soon as the ducts are all in place. And that way we can actually move stuff in. Once our ducts are in a row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark said, beastly in the best sense. Are you by ch any chance a fan of the movie Sense and Sensibility? Did I say that about the grass, I think? Yes, I am a fan of that movie and that book. Um, yeah, so the Vertigo Penicinum is beastly in the best sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so I planted that one in the middle of the brick raised bed area late in the season. So it's really small and just very like a nice accent. The ones at the end of the west side, which we planted late as well, but they're big. And if you might remember the ones we planted at the corner of our gazebo, three of them. They look Those like, got like six and a half, seven feet tall. At least. And it looked like they were just going to kind of crawl into the yard, like take off across the yard with all their little legs. Amy said, I know that your mom has mentioned maybe getting a Hartley now. Do you think she's seriously considering it? And if so, where would she put it? That would be so exciting. Yeah, she's always wanted a Hartley too. The villa, right? The Victorian villa, something a little bit smaller to fit in one of their terraces. I'm not sure that it's something they'll actually do though, because they're thinking about a big old home renovation right now that will really improve a lot of different things about their house um, because it's it's not an enormous house it's a good size house but it's very um, like all the rooms are closed which my mom likes that and I do too open concept is nice as well but when you have closed in rooms it feels more 
like it's an older thing. Like you have a dining room and you well, have a nice living room. It's nice because you can get away and you yeah. can have different seating areas and you know, not and everything is so And uh, you can connected. decorate differently too. Yeah. Because when you've got this huge big open room, it's like it's all kind of the same. Um, but what it doesn't work is when people start getting married and having families and children. Yeah. And then there's really no one room that's big enough to house everyone. Yeah, oh man, you guys should see Christmas morning. It's tough yeah. in their house. And my mom has a lot of stuff too, like a lot of she decorates, you know, and there's a lot of beautiful things. And um, so, yeah, it's a it's a tight squeeze. So they're thinking of, of really improving that about their house. And I think that that will happen before a greenhouse will. I told her you need to like watch everything with, we do with ours, learn from what we do, because you might want to do something differently. I told her she can entertain anytime she wants in our Hartley. She just needs to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mickey or Mikey said tree question when you say you like multi trunk How do they get that way like the trees you guys planted out on the new property have one straight trunk? So do they eventually get to be multi trunk or do you have to buy the tree a certain way? So you'll find multi trunks um, a few different ways sometimes they're actually like whips will be which is like a, a Stem like a one single branch little of a tree like three of them will be planted in the same pot and they can kind of just grow together sometimes you'll see that they've let like it's been trained that the plant because some will grow in a very like shrub form um, so they'll come up and then they'll fork from like a central trunk i have some of each like i have a spring snow crab apple the end of the west side that is uh multi-trunk from a main trunk so it comes up and it branches out kind of like just a regular shrub and then um, the birch trees we just planted on the new property, we did uh, single trees kind of spaced, I don't know how many feet apart. What do you think? Three or four feet apart in a little grouping. Yeah. But the birch tree we planted on the west side, we just dug a big hole and popped three root balls. So I had three separate trees, put them all in the same hole. Um, and I think most trees will actually, they grow fine that way. They kind of communicate with each other and they turn into like the most beautiful structure. Um, the golden rain tree that's in this video behind our brick raised bed comes out from like a central, like I don't see that it's separate trees having been planted together. I think it's all coming from one, which kind of makes me nervous a little bit. <laughs> the tree looks really healthy though. Like this has been the best year ever for that tree, which makes me so happy. Angela said, just wondering if your old structure ended up finding its way to the local park. How did it all turn out? So I think I just talked about that. It's down there. I think they they need to finish it in terms of staining. I think they might, because yeah. they had to use, they had to do new beams because they had to cut the beams, like, or cut the roof off from the beams. I want to say the beams are thicker too. It looks better. It just looks I, better down there. Did, did you get that feeling that the beams were, were a little thicker than even, what we had? I didn't even notice. Maybe it's just like the overall to me looked yeah, I mean, really good. I also noticed that they ran some uh, beams in the inside. You know how like you'd be in the inside and yep. you'd look straight up and it was all open? Oh. They put some beams across. Which makes sense for maybe safety, like but that's a shame. Beams. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, like headers, right? Yeah. That's what you call yeah. those. Yeah. It probably needed to be done, but boy, that open ceiling was one of the best parts of that gazebo. Yeah. I didn't notice that. It needs like a, like an antler chandelier. Well, not now, not with boards hanging in there, well, right? Yeah, before. Yeah, an antler. Yeah, that would have been a perfect style for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, next video was planting one pine and two birch trees. So it was a really smoky day that day. Um, I had brought home two Renaissance reflection birch trees and then an Oregon green pine. And we just went out to the new property and got those all planted and all irrigated, like everything set up to them. And it just, everything we put out there, like even if it's little, I planted a few perennials last night. I didn't film it, but we'll show them to you at some point. But planted some white echinacea and some bright pink cardinal flower. It looks so pretty. But everything that we add, I'm like, oh, it just feels like it's gonna come together. Natalia said, you guys do such a good job at showing in detail how to plant different types of plants, in this case, trees. You've got such good camera angles, quality, you zoom in just at the right time. It makes it easy to follow along, which is so nice to hear. It's encouraging to me because sometimes I'm just, I think to myself like, oh, I could just be, I could fly through planting out here if I didn't film things or if I wasn't waiting for Aaron to set up a shot or, you know, oftentimes when I'm fil filming by myself, that's a lot of camera moving, especially if I want to make it interesting for you guys, because I am more interested when I, like it changes, you know, and there's not just like a static shot of whatever I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it takes a lot longer to film it like that, but I, I like to watch videos better that have more act like act, diversity is that yeah. right is that the right word diversity of shots yeah yeah 
Lindsay Meyer said, wait, so the thumbnail image before the video has a touched up sky, right? <laughs> it was amazing. And then I think you talk about the smoke rolling in and it being hazy. Can't tell if my mind is playing tricks on me. It's not. That was a touched up sky. I think you did that in multiple thumbnails this week, didn't you? Yeah, I did. In one well, of them, you can see the cloud in the high tunnel, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get that one quite. Yeah, I didn't spend a whole lot of time photoshopping. But, uh, I, you know, I was looking at the thumbnail and I was like, it's just so drab with the cloudy it sky. Looked like it looked like orange gray. Yeah, it's like a smoky sky, which is yeah. way worse than a cloudy sky. So anyway, yeah, it's fake. It did look very bright and vibrant. Yeah. Uh, Vertonable, Vertonable, Vertonable. Will you eventually brick edge the new driveways and grass paths? I think that would look wonderful. Yes, we will. I don't know at what point, but we'll probably just chip hopefully away. Hopefully soon. You think so? Uh, hopefully. Huh. Hopefully soon. I, <laughs> I'm looking forward that, to that as well. It makes everything look so char uh, sharp and tidy, and I really like that. And you know, after a full season, well, I mean, it was really last season too. Last season, I mean, that whole space up there was just like, gah. I mean, the cut flower garden was just plopped out in the middle of nowhere. We had tons of plans for what we wanted to do. And then it just seemed like, I don't know, it'll be really nice to see like tidiness and the green grass and all of that after it was such a dust bowl for a mm -hmm. while. Gachi said, are you guys planting trees randomly or do you guys have a list chart or planned map for it? It's 100% random. <laughs> it's like, Last night, I was driving around with Benjamin outside and I thought, I think I've got some perennials I can pop in right here. I think they'll look kind of good. So we went and loaded them up, got the auger and went out and planted them. I mean, it's just completely on a whim. The only things that I do know, like I had a basic idea of how everything was gonna be laid out in terms of the driveway and the cut flower garden. I knew where I wanted the orchard and all of that and the pathways, like we knew how the pathways were gonna be formed. Other than that, like I know I wanna have a few meadow areas, which I've wor been working on my list of what I'm gonna be putting in the meadow um, quite a lot in the last couple of days and so I, I do want to have meadow area but you know who knows exactly where it's gonna end up out there that will happen at random as well so it's really fun to plant without a plan honestly um, because you can just build with things that you find that you love <sighs> love it and then I don't feel like um, I think if I had a written out plan I don't know if you're this way Aaron but you feel like you kind of have to stick with that. Yeah, right. Like, well, I have my plan. This is where I need to put this tree. And it kind of like removes a little bit of the magic of something kind of evolving on its own. Well, I think having a little bit of a plan is good. Which we did. Yeah. We did have a little bit of a plan. And you kind of like, I knew, I think I had roughed in where I wanted big evergreens out there. Mm -hmm. um, and because you need to make sure you have space for that kind of thing. You can't just willy nilly with a whole bunch of... You know, you don't want to go in with a whole bunch of deciduous trees and shrubs and stuff and not leave yourself enough room for those bigger evergreens. Right. Um, Blue SRN said, I wonder how those drip lines will hold up in your winter freeze weather. They usually do just fine. I think all the water kind of like it seeps out of them naturally. But yeah. do we blow those out, those the drip no, we zones? Don't. I don't think we did. We haven't had any issues thus far. Diane said, what kind of mulch do you use? So we have been talking about what we could use out there. I think we're going to compost the whole thing, the planting areas. Yeah, as I was going to ask you about that. So in answer to the question, we use a bunch of different types of mulch. Uh, a lot of the mulch is free from... Oh, the wood uh, chips. The yeah. wood chips, yeah. Which we're going to film a video about probably this the, week. The black mulch is just like in the pathways. Yeah, that was just a bulk mulch from our local Ontario Rock and Landscape. Mm -hmm. They just brought a couple of loads up here. Um, we've got we've got a ton of different types of mulch. There's really not like any one thing that we stick with. Yeah, we've tried a lot of different things. Yeah, as so, long as it doesn't look red, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the brown mulches have a red like yeah. look to them, and I don't I don't care for that in my space. So do you um, do you want to put compost over the top of all the wood chips that we've put out there i don't even mind the look of the wood chips yeah now. that's what i'm wondering is if we should just keep getting wood chips out there almost like separate a little bit like out on the new property we use wood chips because it's such a large area and maybe closer to the house we use uh compost or a darker mulch mm -hmm. i'm good with whatever i mean at first i was a little unsure about the wood chips just because we didn't have very many and so we spread it out and it doesn't they don't go that far like yeah. we had the blue spruce that fell over that they came in and removed. They dropped all of those chips out there. Benjamin's gonna start riding around on his four, uh, lawn tractor. Which way is he gonna come? 
It's the cutest sound ever though. Anyway, yeah, I think that the wood chips is a really good well, it's certainly economical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for that large of an area. And maybe, you know, eventually, once we get more of it filled in, it will make sense to put prettier, more decorative mulch out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Uh, because we won't be filling up such a huge expanse. Um, Sasik said, question about the drip lines. My understanding is that trees take up most of their nutrients and water from the feeder roots at the outer edges of the canopy. So when you put a circle about one foot radius from the trunk when the tree is young, doesn't that need to gradually expand away from the trunk as it grows? Yep, it does. Um, so right now we're watering the root ball because that's the only place where there are roots. Uh, and you know, they're going to start to root out a little bit, which the water subs out and hits all the roots that those trees have. But the watering needs of the trees and any plant will change drastically after the first few years and after the trees start to mature and put on size. And we'll just address that as it comes. We are planning on just making it a yearly thing to go out there and replace all of the rings of the brown drip tubing because we have such hard water and you can't really like, our drip tubing usually works pretty well for a while, yeah. but you can't trust it 100% ever. Like even if it's brand new, you can't right. trust it. We've had so many malfunctions and so many suffering plants because we've, thought, well, we put drip to it, you know, it's fine, but you don't realize it's plugged or there's some other malfunction. And you cannot go in the summer here a day without watering some of the things in our garden. Um, and you know, you miss one day and the whole thing is shot. It's, it can be discouraging. So anyway, we're going to make it an annual chore just to go out and replace all the drips. So it's all fresh at that point we'll expand. And once the trees are mature, uh, we will have some areas, I think, well, the grass pathways, of course, um, like the meadow areas, I think I'm going to run drip through that, uh, but it'll be a different type of drip. And then any area I've got thick, planted more thickly with perennials, we'll use the brown drip tubing with the holes every 18 inches. And I think once we, the trees hit some maturity, we won't have to be like target watering those trees quite as much. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Aaron. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Once we have other stuff out there, it won't be as much of an issue. I don't think so. Uh, Julie said, love the trees. I see the original birches staked to the ground. Well, you need to support the others. Are there only certain kinds of birch trees that can be planted in a clump? I think you can plant whatever kind of birch tree you want in a clump. Um, I've seen lots of different varieties available in clump form. And we will probably have to support the other trees. Uh, you know, we just had some severe windstorms this year and it just, we had to stake some of ours to where they, I mean, they're so exposed out there. The other ones look good so far, but we haven't had any super huge wind. I do think we're gonna be staking our maples back up. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what, how come you moved, removed the stakes to begin with? Well, I didn't want them to stay on. You know, they were already, uh, so we had them on for how many months? Like four months, maybe? Maybe. And a couple of them were already starting to stick. Oh. Like the tree was growing so quickly over the top. Uh -huh. So I'm glad that I removed them because if I would have waited all summer, um, some of those the straps, straps would have been stuck in yeah, there. Yeah, would have mm -hmm. been stuck in the, uh, what do you call that? Like in the crotch? In the crotch. Yeah, yeah. between. <laughs> sounds like a bad thing to well, say. Well, I know, but where the, yeah, the <laughs> yeah, right. branch meets the trunk. So I was thinking this winter, maybe we'll stick them up. And they're not actively growing. Yeah. Yeah. And then just do the same thing. Just leave them again. Once we start mowing, mm -hmm. take them off again for the growing season. I don't yeah. know if that's like you smart could, or not. I don't know. I mean, I see other people stake with like two or three wood stakes and then they've got straps around them. And I don't know. We just haven't, I haven't staked like in my years of gardening. I just don't make it a common practice of staking anything yeah. unless it starts to lean. But this is just a whole new experience so what, for what me. I understand what you're talking about with the you know the two stakes on each side uh -huh. and then the straps uh -huh. you know from my understanding that's something that you do on a young tree like a really young tree as it's growing up uh -huh. and it stops it from doing anything too crazy but our, our trees are already pretty large and what we need is more like a corrective measure we don't need to guarantee that it goes that it grows straight we need to actually correct the fact that it's already bent I don't think what you're talking about will correct a tree because I've never seen them uh, hold the tree any higher than about three feet. And you're wanting to correct like where the, the trunk and the canopy kind of, like yeah. the trunk is straight and then the canopy is like, nah. right. so you're trying just to bring this bring back the canopy keep the back. trunk straight. Yeah. I don't know. I told them you can stake the trees however you want. I just do not want to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, not going to do that again. Um, anyway. Yeah, you just knock yourself out, Erin. <laughs> we'll get those. They look really good. And, you know, it's just in our area with, you get one windstorm come through on new stuff and it'll just rock the whole thing. If it's right. not rooted in, it will rock the whole thing over, out there anyway. Every time though, like prior, the reason I'd never staked anything is everything I planted. Look at that huge stink bug. 
Oh, wow. Whoa. It's coming. It's coming for me. We're going to get a whole bunch of people saying, that's not a stink bug. <laughs> this is what we call a stink bug in our area. And squash bugs, which I think people usually refer to squash bugs as stink bugs. Anyway, oh, really? Yeah. Well, these are stinky, though. Yeah, they all stink. Anyway, I saw that out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, ha, what's moving toward me? Marissa said, will you be planting any oak trees on the new property? Do you have favorite varieties of oaks? You know, I need to do a little bit more research on different varieties. I would love to have some oak trees, but they have to be the type that lose their leaves in the fall. No trees do I want out there that hold on to their brown leaves throughout the winter. You might remember our oak hedge that was behind the gazebo, which is now like behind the Hartley. Um, those oak trees were an old, old variety and they held on to those brown leaves all, all year. It wasn't just a winter thing. Like they would look brown and dead all winter long and then they would drop their brown leaves all over on, on like the top of the beautiful white snow. And then every time we got any kind of breeze throughout the year, like they'd hold on to leaves in the center of the tree, they would never really release them all. And we'd get like a whole new crop of fall. It looked like fall all the time over there drove me nuts yeah so that's something that i don't want to have on the new property those trees also had a virus so oh, i felt extra good about taking them <laughs> out um anyway i do love oak trees though they're beautiful beautiful color uh next video is planting more trees and daylilies so we planted the uh shawnee brave bald cypress that we picked up at far west in boise when aaron and i went over there finally got those in the ground and then i planted a bunch of orange smoothie daylilies in a drift out there uh, Sandra said, with all the despair of recent world events, what a respite, respite? How do you say that? I'm not sure. Uh, it is to visit a place where planting orchards, meadows, and butterfly gardens is the business of the day. Thank you, Erin and Laura, for offering another much needed perspective. Because of you, our little lot in the middle of the suburbs holds promise of a little GA whimsy. God bless your sweet family and the work that you do. That's awesome. And that's the thing about our channel. Um, you know, it is hard sometimes to ig not ignore, but not bring in things that are happening, you know, because there's always, always things happening that are negative and, and horrific and if you want commentary on those things, there's plenty there's of, a lot of avenues channels, to, yeah. get, to get that commentary. Right. You don't need one more place. Right. We wanted from the beginning a place that was free of drama, free of negativity, free of just a, an escape. That's what our gardens are for so many of us. They're a therapeutic place. They're a peaceful place. And why we would need to bring in anything else that's going on. Like, I don't know. I, I think it's unnecessary to do that in every single avenue. It doesn't mean that we don't have opinions or thoughts or feelings about everything else that's going on because we do. Um, but this isn't the place for it. This is the place for beauty and, and, and peace. Hopefully forever. <laughs> Dana said, I'm curious how it works with Proven Winter sending you plants. Do you put it in an order or do they have a list of the things they want you to talk about in videos? How much larger is that plant delivery now that you have the additional land and how much larger will it be next year when you'll have actual flower buds to fill? Does your mom plan to lar uh, for larger orders too knowing a, uh, <laughs> Laura, a big Laura planting boom is on the horizon? Uh, my mom does call me when she's ordering stuff uh, now, for the most part, and lets me know, like, hey, if you want to see the availabilities, if you want something in mass, you know, like, we do that for fall. My fall order is supposed to arrive this week, like, Wednesday, I think, and I pre-ordered all of that stuff. And it's easier on the grower, too, because if you want a certain amount of something, I mean, growers can accommodate a lot of big orders. Like, mine is a blip on their radar, but it is nice um, to get those things reserved just in case somebody else has a huge order or a few other people have huge orders of a, something specific that way you can make sure to get your hands on it and that's kind of the thing when you're doing larger flower beds it takes just so much more stuff to fill them in um, so like on a regular order if my mom is ordering 10 of something a perennial say and I want to plant a big drift of it sometimes it could take like 11 or 13 of those plants in order to create the size of drift I need um, to look right in the area so she ch does check with me now um, with proven winners they don't ever send me a, they don't ever have a list of things that they want us to talk about in videos. It's all like natural, whatever comes up, whatever I'm wanting to plant at the time. Joy said, you talk a lot about making a meadow in several areas of the new property, um, i.e. in the orchard. Can you talk about how you plan slash prepare to have a meadow? Uh, you know, this is all new for me. I do know that meadows like to be on kind of tough sites. They don't need super fertile and don't want super fertile rich soil, which that's perfect for the areas that I'm gonna be planting them. Let me share a little bit of my, my list. I've got a list of plants started um, that I want to have in the space. 
and I haven't really honed it down exactly because I do want certain colors. I don't really want a bunch of red or hot orange. I want it to be like pink, purple, yellow, white, um, that kind of color scheme. Uh, so there's a uh, columbine, I want milkweed in there, partridge, partridge pea, coreopsis, a couple, few different varieties of echinacea, uh, monardas, there's a few varieties of monardas, uh, goldenrod, smaller varieties of goldenrod, uh, foxglove, rudbeckias, um, asters, wild rye, and Indian grass. I think Indian grass is beautiful. Um, so those are just a few things. I've got some other things, like I would love a little joe, joe pie joe pie weed but i need to get a hold of the smaller i don't want the meadow to be massive and you know joe pie weed gets so big and there's a lot of different varieties of like heliopsis that would be great but they get huge so i'd need to source some smaller growing varieties but anyway so i've got a few that's just one of my lists i have another list started somewhere i'd have to go find it though <laughs> it's somewhere in my documents anyway i'm super not organized but it's fun to look at all those things and figure out like percentages of what you want like what do you want it to be primarily um and you know i i kind of rethinking the the meadow that i wanted right next to the driveway because unless i play it right there will be some times of the year where it's a little scraggly it'll be scraggly uh, scraggly a lot of the year no it won't it'll be perfection Aaron. <laughs> okay <laughs> i think but i'm rethinking the spot by the driveway i'm thinking of like tucking it a little bit further in until i until i kind of master if I ever I do. think creating an artificial meadow here would be near impossible. That's it's a challenge. It, yeah, it's a challenge. We'll see. But we'll see. I think it'd be really difficult to do. I will win, Aaron. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Jeannie said, maybe you should invest in a post hole digger for the tractor. Looked into it. Yeah? Yeah, it's really expensive. And a lot of tractors, you have to buy a downforce kit. Because a lot of times on the th th uh, three-point hitch, there's you can't force it down it's just gravity basically pulling it down so she's talking about an auger right for like make holes for plants yeah okay yeah and uh, most tractors don't really have enough hydraulic power to to like adequately Ours doesn't. to put it like a big enough hole in the ground mm -hmm. so we could do it but i think the biggest hole i could put in there would be like a 20 like maybe a 30 inch auger that's a big auger but we rented a 36 inch auger on the i mean it's only six inches but on the skid steer. Well, and do you think though that we'll ever be planting like huge, huge root balls? Like, Not unless we buy more property. Oh, that doesn't look like it's going to happen for a no, while. No, probably not. You know, the, the uh, properties that are surrounding us are uh, families that have lived here for a long, long, long time. Yeah. And I think that if, if they should ever want to sell any of their land, they, they know that we are interested at some point in purchasing more, but I don't think, I think they would come to us first. Karen said, question about my hydrangeas. I planted them too far forward in my garden and they got huge. Is it safe to move them when I cut them back in the spring? You know, it's a risk whenever you transplant anything, but I would think that that would be the best time to do it is when you're cutting them back, give them a good haircut, move them, make sure they stay very well watered. And they, I usually have pretty good luck with that. It kind of depends on how mature they are too. Like if they've been in your garden for lots and lots and lots of years, it's higher risk than if they're fairly new. AV Farm said, Daylily question, do these newer varieties behave themselves? I remember older varieties that will take over. I haven't, I've had orange smoothies, the variety I planted in this video for quite a number of years in other parts of my garden. They stayed to themselves. I've never had them take over. so. Maybe they do behave themselves better. Day Moon Farm says, can we get a full mini tour of the cut flower garden, please? We actually thought about doing that. Maybe even today. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a, such a pleasant day out. Uh, next video is finishing up our onion and potato harvest and prepping them for storage. Um, yeah, so I had all those onions sitting in the barn. They had been there for, oh, I don't even know, several days little over a week, maybe a week, 10 days. Anyway, I was waiting for them to cure and dry so I could get all the dirt cleaned off of them and remove the tops and the roots. And so we got all of that done, got them packed up and put in the root cellar. And then I went out and in fact, it was the next day. So the video spanned over the course of like late afternoon one day and the morning of the next day. Uh, and I finished up our potato harvest, which honestly I could have left them in the ground longer, but had I left them in the ground longer, I, I would have lost out on the opportunity to plant some fall crops, which every last bit of that space out there, I think at this point has something planted in it, um, whether it be seeds that aren't up yet or something that is existing. And I have other things in that row. So I have um, be beans planted, I think, and then some other seeds on the other end. And I was having to keep that row pretty wet to keep, get those seeds up and going. And I thought if I have to keep doing this, the potatoes are not gonna be happy. They don't want all that constant moisture. Um, so I thought it was best to get those 
uh, picked up. Now, between the two of those, I think I ended up with, it was some, somewhere in the 700s, 700 plus like 750 pounds, somewhere mm -hmm. around there of onions and potatoes, which is crazy. Uh, Lacey said, why when you say harvest our potatoes, do I feel like you're including all of us in uh, the hour? You're so sweet to bring us along through your gardening endeavors. I don't plant a lick of produce in my garden, so I would really enjoy watching you reap what you've sown. I feel like you do that in life with your generosity and kindness too. Thank you, Lacey, that was really sweet. And I hope that a lot of you guys get that from our videos. I hope that um, you feel like you're right there because I feel like you guys are right there. There's so many times where I'm doing something in the garden. I'm like, I should be filming this because I want to share this with my friends. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's so fun. The community that we have here. Anne said, which potato variety is your favorite to grow and cook? I would say the Huckleberry Golds are one of the better ones uh, that I've grown. They always yield beautifully. They're always nice and large. Um, they're a beautiful potato and the purple skin with that yellow, like kind of buttery flesh. Um, I hate that word, flesh, but mm. that's what it is. Um, the German Butterballs are good and the Yukon Golds are good too. I don't know. I like potatoes in general, so I don't, I don't think you can go wrong. Debbie said, what is the lovely red foliage next to the potatoes, please? That is the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. I start those from seed. They are the most beautiful seedlings, like of all the seeds that I have going in the studio or up in the plant room the last two years. You see this gorgeous tray of bright red leaves. Um, they're easy to grow. They take our wind and our heat and our full sun. And I don't use them actually to cut on very often. You do have to make the cuts at the right area of the plant, otherwise they wilt. Um, and I don't, I tend to shy away from anything that may welt in an arrangement because I don't want to, I like mine are highly sculpted arrangements. And if I lose a specific element, like one of my base elements with the leaves, it's a huge pain to replace it. So I usually shy away from stuff like that. I just grow them because they're beautiful and I like to look at them. Danielle said, do you have a video on how you made your root cellar? I have a huge garden and need something like what you have set up. Uh, do we have an actual video of that? I can't remember. It was kind of piecemeal. Yeah, it was just it pieced was... together in a bunch of different much different vlogs yeah because we weren't the ones who did it you know eddie who does a lot of our he gen was the general for our hartley in fact uh, and he is getting ready to start in on the shed out in our cut flower garden here pretty quick uh, and he does just he does a beautiful job it's not even his full-time job yeah <laughs> he does it on the side but he was the one who built it and it was built in uh you know when you're working with somebody who's not doing it as their full-time job they're working in evenings and weekends and things so it wasn't done like super super fast so it was a really hard one to kind of put together i think in one video and i think that's why i ended up kind of i gave updates throughout the process uh, but i wonder if it'd be worth a tour through it now that i know how to operate the, the system erin yeah <laughs> um because we had a few things put in there to where we could I don't, I don't even control it from my phone but i have the ability to do that now if I want to, um, but the AC unit and the, the vent fan and all of that, I've got it figured out at this point. I'm keeping it right now at kind of a steady, it's like right at 50, did I have it at 54, 55 anyway. I can't, I just messed with it again. Maybe it was at 56 and I think I dropped it a couple of degrees. Anyway, it's staying very constant and it, uh, I didn't have to kick it up until I started putting potatoes in there this summer. So, you know, for several months out of the year, I'm not even running any of the system. I keep the, the vent fan flap open so that there's air in there, um, but I don't actually have to use the AC unit or I, if it gets too cold in the winter, I use a little floor heater that kicks on. So it's really a pretty efficient little room. And it's only like six by nine inside, Erin, I think. Doesn't it seem bigger than that? Uh, it's pretty small. It's, it's a pretty small little space, but it's, it was so worth it. Elizabeth said, you seem to be busy all the time. When do you rest? You know, I think we have struck a fairly good balance ever since Benjamin was born. I think our, our life just shifts naturally with that big life change. And now that we have Samantha, I mean, it's even more because, you know, we, we really purpose to spend a lot of time with the kids. So evenings are like kids and, and uh, Samantha, she's not at moving stage yet. So she needs a lot of like, if she sees me walk in the room, like she just immediately like- She wants you. Yeah, and she wants me to hold her facing out and she'll be really happy. But if she sees me moving about the room and I'm not like paying attention to her right now, yeah. 
so we're kind of right because I think she's right at that stage where she's frustrated that she can't move to where she wants to go. Yeah. I actually ordered a carrier last night. Did you see that? It's like this really neat. You can face them. You can wear them on the back, but mm -hmm. you can also wear them on the front, which I'll wear her on the front facing out. And it looks like a real. It's got really good reviews. Mm, cool. Anyway, I thought now that the weather is so nice, I'm just going to strap her on so we can just roll. She loves to be outside, but I don't think that she. I don't. I don't want her just to be laying in that stroller all the time either. Yeah. You know, so we have her out a lot. Anyway, I don't know. I we also went down to six days a week like last year mm -hmm. uh, when I was got pregnant with Samantha. We kind of went down to six days a week posting on our main channel you want to go down to five days a week yeah did we do how long did we do seven days a week a while it was a good while we yeah, did that was because day. of casey neistat he was he, your inspiration he did, in that yeah, area he did a video every day but you know what he didn't last more than about a year too yeah it's a lot yeah. six days a week is doable and i am such like i'm a driven person that way anyway i like to like i like to feel productive and i like to see that productivity I don't know it does something for me um so I don't know five days a week to me I'm the one that's like no let's just continue six days unless we have to go down to five days let's just continue doing six days yeah. well it's kind of like seven videos because of the highlight this video this right video, here yeah so we do seven videos a week just not all on the same channel yeah there's yeah. just so much to me like so much I could be filming out here not that it's a good idea to do every, you know, to film yeah. every last thing um, or to have a camera on yourself every last minute of the day. There's a lot of stuff that just doesn't get filmed. But I don't know, there's so many projects going on though too that you just want to like capture everything and yeah. not. Maybe this winter we'll go down to five. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Dale Tag said, why don't you sell your harvested crops? I, it's just, I feel like it's unnecessary. I, you know, it's something that we could do should we ever need to. There might be a day where we need to do that. And it feels good that we have an area where we could produce, like I could do cut flowers if I wanted to or needed to um, it's for It's a huge money. amount of effort though to yeah, sell. It's an enormous amount of, of effort, even just to get everything grown. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, I'm not the only one working out there too. Like Paul is here. He's not 100% working at the cut flower garden. He does a ton of other things. Um, but it takes more than just me out here to do what's done. Yeah. Like there's just no way. There is no way. That was one of the considerations of buying the new property in front. We just thought, well, if we want to continue um, doing videos at the clip that we're doing videos at uh, and working that full time job and, you know, also having kids and wanting to spend time with the kids and like there's no way that I could just do it all by myself. Plants so. require a lot of care. Especially and here. Especially here. Yeah. And if you're if you're gonna try to be the person who's knowledgeable about a lot of different varieties, it means you have to plant a lot of different varieties. That's true. Which means you have, a, have to have a big garden, mm -hmm. which means you need help. Yeah. Carol said, why do you weigh the vegetables that you harvest? Just out of pure interest to see how much we could get out of the space. I actually, I thought in the beginning I had this whole list of everything I was gonna, was growing and I was gonna track everything. That just. Well, you're kind of tracking it in videos. I, yeah, but when you harvest like cucumbers every single day, oh sure, and like I haven't har I haven't kept track of how many watermelons I've harvested or um, cantaloupe that I've harvested, which we've harvested quite a number, um, like the squash and pumpkins. We might get weights of those. I got weights of the onions and peppers because, or I mean, onions and potatoes because those are easy. They're like one crop out there. You harvest them all pretty much at the same time, and then you can get weights on them. But the things that you're harvesting off of every day, the peppers and tomatoes and everything, I just stopped because it was too much. It was, it's too much to track, which I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that there's so much bounty out there right yeah. now. Anna said, why not use shade cloth over your tomatoes? I, that is a great idea. I probably should have done something like that. I actually just got some, um, they're like almost like mini arbors. They're almost big enough to be an arbor for a walkway. Uh, but from Gardener Supply, they have these um, like big hoops that you can put over things with shade cloth or whatever. Um, and that's something that I should have done and I'll probably do that next year. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if we'll, we may do tomatoes there again this next season. I'm not sure um, and try again and just try to um, shade them, mm -hmm. protect them a little bit from all of the elements out there because I think that's what went so wrong with those tomatoes. But um, anyway, yeah, so that is, it's on my brain. Next video was seeding grass, cut flower arrangements, and strawberry biscuits. Kind of a menagerie of stuff, but Aaron was out seeding the grass pathways. The sprinklers are done, and I am just really 
happy with how precise those sprinklers are. Like when, you know, because the grass is seeded, so Aaron has the water coming on just for a few minutes every like two hours or something. And um, they're so, like you can see the moist pathway. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's perfect the way they did it. Um, and then I did a couple of cut flower arrangements, one for, I put it in uh, Samantha's nursery, and then one I put in a bathroom, and uh, then Benjamin and I made some strawberry biscuits. It's really fun. Amber said, I love Aaron's positivity. He's like, I am the master of the grass. Great job, guys. Love seeing it all come together. You are a master of the grass and the arbs, for the most part, <laughs> except for the arbs behind the greenhouse. <clears throat> some, um, like, yeah, un... What? It had to be, it had to be radiant heat. Uh, it had to be, well, no, I don't think that, I think that's what finished them. That's not what started it. Oh, maybe. Yeah, because that shed wasn't there last year. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Teresa said, did you know grubs are Japanese beetle babies? Yuck. That's probably why you don't have grubs because you also don't have Japanese beetles. Not all grubs are Japanese beetles. There's a lot of grubs that are for other things. Um, and we do have like bill bugs, uh, grubs like that in our grass. Um, so anyway, some lawns do have bill bug and other grub issues in our area, um, and some just don't. And so far, like ours hasn't had any kind of issues, but I remember going out with my dad when I was little, he did like, he had a side hustle going on. He was working at the garden center. He didn't own it. I don't think at this time he may have owned like a part of it. Like my parents bought in over time. Um, uh, anyway. Uh, he would take care of people's lawns. He would do like fertilizer applications, uh, grub applications, and I would go with him on some Saturdays or evenings uh, when he did these lawns. And yeah, I just have memories. Like we'd go to the 7-Eleven and get a drink and a candy, and it was like a special treat for us. But a lot of those, that side hustle paid for like our piano lessons and our soccer uniforms and things like that. Like I have a whole new appreciation for, you know, all the extra stuff that they did. Uh, Rita said, did we completely lose the Kinsley honeysuckle? What was its fate? You know what? A lot of those plants went to a friend's house. And mm -hmm. I think both of the Kinsley ghosts went to that friend's, that same friend's house. Maybe at one point we'll get to go out and see some of their plants. Because I know that their garden has changed a little bit. Since you were pretty much like, from here to here, you can take whatever you want. You take what you want. You want. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, there was just no way. We didn't have the infrastructure ready on the new property yet. I didn't know uh, how, like quite how I wanted to go about planting things and I didn't want to feel rushed. I didn't want to start that property out with a rush planting, you know. I wanted it to kind of come together naturally and so most of the plants, most of them ended up in other people's gardens. I did move a few things. Mm -hmm. Like I have that beautiful stand of geraniums and the tree peony and you did a things. lot of transplanting videos. I did a lot. I did a lot from around the gazebo mm -hmm. because I focused way more on planting some things around that rather than up front because up front had a lot of stuff from the previous owners still. Yeah. And we just hadn't tackled it. So many areas we haven't tackled. Like it's crazy to me all that we've gotten done, but all that we haven't gotten done yet. Right. You know, at the same time. Lori said, does Espoma say, hey, Laura and Aaron, we have an abundance of flower tone. Can you use it up on your channel so we can get it used up? No. <laughs> no, they don't. That land and sea, though, I think it's just such a good product. I think that's what that was in reference to. I don't think Espoma has an abundance of anything. <laughs> well, not at this point. From what I mean, I've talked to them, like the last couple years specifically, I mean, it's been like that for a lot of people in the industry, but like they, they just can't keep up. Exponential growth. Yeah. Trying to source all of like the raw components that they need for their stuff and packaging as well. Uh, packaging materials. They can't keep materials. anything on the shelf. Yeah. I mean, they're keeping up enough to where, you know, we can still get it. But yeah, but there some are things. some products that they're not even making because they're so busy with some of their main products. You uh -huh. know, like when when Espoma started, Holly Tone was like their thing. Yeah. That was like Espoma's claim to fame. Uh -huh. And then they started branching out into a lot of other things. But there's a lot of side things that I've been told they just haven't made any more of because mm -hmm. they're so focused on making like Holly Tone and mm -hmm. things like that. You don't want to dedicate the production time to some other product that... Well, may not sell as well. The crazy thing is Land and Sea is what, like three years old, two years old, like a brand new product. Mm -hmm. And that has been, I think, a really good one. Yeah. That's amazing. It's an amazing compost. Mud Dev says, can you tell me what kind of spreader you're using behind your gator? Is there one that you don't have to get on and off to open and close it? Okay. So there's a couple different types of spreaders. I was using the John Deere spreader. I think it was like 130 gallon or 130 pound. I think that's how they rate it. Uh, the problem with that one is that when you opened 
the spreader, it would start dumping immediately. Mm. So you really had to be on it that you, you know, you open the chute and you got to start driving. Like you'd have to Otherwise, run up to the gator, get on and start rolling. Well, yeah, you really wouldn't want to be on a gator. You'd want to be like on a lawn tractor where you could reach back sure. and turn it on once you started moving. Because otherwise you'll have a pile of fertilizer or seed mm -hmm. or whatever right underneath the spreader. So I really didn't like that. I ended up buying the Chapin spreader and I don't know which model it is, but it's like the biggest one, mm -hmm. I think, the biggest plastic one they sell. And that has a feature where it's gear driven and it the chute doesn't allow anything to fall through if the wheels are not moving. Mm. So if you stop, it stops letting it fall through. That is nice. Yeah. But if you have it hooked up to a gator, it means that you have to get out of the gator and keep turning the chute on and off every time that... Would it be that way for on the lawn tractor though too, right? It's just closer. But that yeah, bolt, that have bolt, to, there's a yeah, bolt there's a that bolt comes in the down. Way. I'm really unhappy with the Chapin spreader because things get stuck. Um, and I don't know if it's, I don't know, but, but all I know is that um, I have like an, an issue with... like an agitator inside. Well, it does have an agitator, oh, it but does? it just doesn't work properly. Oh, well, maybe so, it's a lemon. Maybe we should try another one. Maybe it is lemon. Maybe, maybe it would work better if I got a different one. Your parents sell it at the garden center. Yeah. I'm looking at one right now that is much larger. It's like a metal, it's still gear driven, but it like hooks up with a ball hitch and... For the gator? Uh, or the lawn tractor. I'm kind of looking at upgrading the lawn tractor actually <laughs> with the new with the new land. Well, we'll sell. So it won't be that big of a deal, but we'll sell the lawn tractor we have now. So we'll make some money off of that. Uh -huh. And then we'll we'll get a I just need a bigger deck. Well, for the new grass. Yeah, yeah. for the new grass. It mm -hmm. just it'll take a while to mow. But anyway, so I'm looking at a, at a new spreader. Um, I'll, I'll try it out. It's not really it something that a really residential lawn would want. It would be really ideal if John Deere would want to work with us <laughs> like at this point. Uh, we do not work with John Deere or DeWalt, by the way. Yeah. Like, neither of those companies do we ever work with or talk to. <laughs> we just happen to have a lot of their equipment. Yeah. So, anyway, if anybody works for John Deere out there, throw our name in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any other thoughts on that? Sorry, I don't know if I just Not really. You. I mean, those are my thoughts about the those two mm -hmm. the john deere and the chapin those are the only two i really have experience the with. bolt that comes down is the worst that is a bad design yeah, there's they put a, a bolt right where you need to adjust the lever the lever and that the is lever is not like super easy right and it so takes a you're kind of kinda, yeah you're doing a forceful thing and i immediately you even told me you were like watch out the uh, that bolt and the first thing i did was like yourself got, on got, it yeah got scraped lawsuit uh, <laughs> Naren said, love the arrangements. Thank you. I'm really curious about the lamp in the restroom. Is that the norm in America? I think so. I see lamps in everybody's bedroom, bathrooms, like on the counter. We, yeah, the overhead light is used like when you put on makeup or you're getting ready, but like during the day or evenings or whatever, there's, I've always seen like little, little lamps. Yeah. That's pretty know. common in my circles anyway. I don't know, like your, your mom has them. All of, uh, all of our family. Maybe it's our family thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Amy said, I love your brick edging separating the gravel and beds. Do you just lay down the brick on the soil or do you put some kind of base down first? Now, when I do the brick border, like I did around the chicken coop, I laid it straight on the soil and those are not very solid. And it was just like a temporary measure. They've been great though. But when we oh. have Benny's uh, outfit do it, they do an amazing job. They do it like they're laying a brick walkway. They scrape back the soil. They do a layer of road mix pack it down a layer of uh it's a specific type of it's not sand it's like a larger All American sand no uh, that's it's, what they put on that's top. what they put on top it's like a gritty it's almost like halfway between sand and a small gravel oh it's like a gritty sand like a gravelly sand i don't know anyway it's what he prefers to use and then they lay the bricks um and then they put a border, the plastic border edging with the big pins to keep it all in place. And then they do a uh, polymeric sand and then they do like a little concrete, you don't see it, but where they have um, pulled away. So they've got the plastic edging up against the grass or the flower bed, then the bricks come out. And then like, let's say this is driveway, they will have dug away here and then they pour concrete. Like they mix up concrete and pour this little like tube kind of of concrete that holds the concrete or the bricks in from that side mm. instead of doing two plastic edging i did it on this other it keeps everything like really well in place we drive the gator and stuff over the the bricks over here and it doesn't dislodge them at all now you get a concrete truck in here <laughs> to pour the footers of the hartley that totally screwed up a bunch of stuff over there um, so we'll have to have that replaced but we figured that we were gonna have to have it replaced anyway because we're gonna have to we still have to take out the concrete where the pergola was and 
that whole area will see a revamp here pretty quick anyway. Shara said, so okay, I have to ask, what are your plans regarding the mowing of the grass? Somebody human <laughs> or one of those cute electric mowers like you were using before? You've had some uh, flip-flop kind of opinions yeah, on that. Yeah, you know, I thought that I was going to want one of the electric mowers, the, the Husqvarna ones, and I have just kind of switched on that. Um, the lines started to get to me after mm -hmm. a while. The fact that it didn't mow in straight lines and the the model that i have mows too short mm. uh, in the summertime i like to to mow it a lot higher in mm -hmm. the summer because it's so freaking hot here yeah and i just i want to water less and i honestly think that it it looks better mm -hmm. when it's mowed taller it's more green mm -hmm. and you don't deal with the uh, like burn spots mm -hmm. by mowing it too short mm -hmm. so to me it's just like a win-win mm -hmm of mowing it taller but this thing just it's like the highest setting was still too short for my liking now there are models where it mows taller but i'm afraid that if it mows taller that the lines will be even more pronounced mm. yeah all over the place that just that's a little bit too much for me i will say in the springtime in the fall it looked like this spring it looked pretty nice it did we had one going on this grass you know that um the local guy, Caps from Caps of Ontario. Yeah. Um, they are Husqvarna dealer, and anyway, we uh, Husqvarna gave us the first one. Yeah. Uh, we weren't like paid to promote it or or use it. Well, it's just like anything it. else. It's kind of like a review unit. Yeah, yeah. They, like there they was no expectations. If we didn't like it, we could just say, right. eh, we didn't like." Well, like right now, we're saying, "Ah, eh. yeah." <laughs> you know, after we've used it. But you liked it enough last fall to buy a new one this spring yeah, for the strip. Yeah, I spent money on a second one. So yeah. now I'm just going to sell both of them. And hopefully I'll... made their money back. Yeah, right. On the yeah. unit they sent out. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'll recoup enough money to pay for the one that I yeah. I bought. Because um, you haven't been using it for since no, it got really hot. Yeah. Like June. It's, it was just the heat. Once it got over 100, I mm -hmm. was unhappy with the way it looked and mm -hmm. the way it cut and everything. So You're going to mow the front lawn today, right? Yeah so exciting so he's mowed it once and so today will be twice and then after like the third or fourth time we can take care of some of the broadleaf weeds with that lawn weed Benny says six Benny says to mow it six times before you spray I think my dad says three or four well you know one is just more out of an abundance of caution yeah you know what are you gonna do because I noticed the button weeds are like ah, yeah again. they are but I think I'm just gonna keep mowing it mm -hmm. and I think that the grass will eventually kind of choke it out you're right it, it did on the the side yard yeah or i don't know what to call anything you know the strip the east the, the east, east strip, strip of grass <laughs> yeah okay let's move on to the last video from this week which was this morning we filmed our eight garden fails from this year which is not the only fails we've had when you do so many projects in the garden you are bound like a certain ratio is just not going to work out um we've had extreme weather and i know a lot of you guys have had that as well maybe in different ways maybe a ton of rain i know a lot of you guys have been dealing with that uh, we all have our own sets of issues um i think too sometimes i get like really excited about projects and i get myself a little bit like i don't have enough time to really Stretch handle everything um, and so you learn every year a little bit about yourself i mean i bit off a lot for having a brand new baby in the house this this year it's all worked out pretty well yeah pretty well we've gotten a lot done out on the new property oh, we need to do a before and after we tour. really do i mean and just really talk about each aspect and like conjure up find all the footage from right. from before of what things look like i think it would be once we have once we have things a little bit more buttoned up around the hartley um, in like the front yard a little bit more but like with the brick walkway it'd be fun to do like a complete and compare it against the first tour we did at this house which we did in a series of four because we thought the videos were going to be way too long so each one of them were like about 15 minutes right yeah we did four tour videos like 10 sometimes oh really yeah we were trying not to make the videos too long things have it was changed so different though. back then the yeah. way everybody did videos. Yeah. Okay, Mark said, uh, something to consider about the browning arborvita behind the cold frame is the metal structure that's right behind them. Yes. The 100 plus, 100 plus heat beating on the metal structure probably caused an oven-like environment and just baked and dehydrated the plants. Just something to consider for future planting there and possible replacements. I think you are absolutely right. I think that's one of the factors. However, whatever was going on with them started last year. Uh, they started to look- And the structure wasn't there the last year. The structure wasn't there last year. That's the key, <laughs> the key part. The structure was not moved in there until this spring, like in February or so, first part of February. Um, so whatever 
happened to them to initially start the decline happened last year, which is why I'm thinking it was a spray thing that happened. And then I think the addition of the shed back there with the fact that they were already struggling with the oven, like all that radiant heat and the reflective heat and, um, and such, I think that you're right. I think that just finished them off. Um, so I think there was a couple of things in play back there and I mean, it's a bummer, but I'm also excited because, you know, whenever something like that happens, like when the spruce tree falls down, it's a bummer, but then you can think of like, oh, now I have room to do a cool pathway or like a little patio area out there or whatever. Uh, and back there, I'm thinking, you know, I have those other two raised beds. What if I had a more narrow one, a really long, narrow one built that was tall right there and I could do all kinds of fun stuff back there? God, that would be so pretty because I don't think we should do arbs again. No, not, not with the shed being there, which I love, by the way, the shed being there. It's really nice. Um, so our neighbor has that, that shorter shed and then they have a bigger one right behind our barn with an RV in it. Um, and before, like, I think by moving their shed this way, it blocked a lot of our junk from them seeing it and it blocked a lot of their junk from us seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it like it, it solved a whole bunch of problems. Anyway, um, so like it's all good in the end. And I think a raised bed back there will be really pretty, but we have removed all the arbs. They're all gone now. And it looks weird. Like when you yeah. look back to the barn and the greenhouse, you see like our white fence and then the shed. And before it was all broke up with the green art. Well, not green. They were like half brown. The ones on the far end looked a little bit better, but they were still on the decline. And we just got ahead of it. We'll do something different there at this point. What do you think about using that to house plants? That oh, area? you're probably right. Except that one section is visible from the driveway and like when you're out in the garden and i think yeah. that that should not be so much because when you have plants laying out it can tend to look a little junky especially after wind has knocked them over and, and right. so forth um but i mean it is a utility area so we can definitely maybe we could build some supports for plants like little things to keep the plants upright yeah it would be less windy back there anyway though. and then we could get rid of the high tunnels out right. there that's what i was thinking oh i think i would like that better yeah yeah we could get rid of a lot of the junk back behind the barn yeah but the the thing we do have to worry about is um them not getting enough sun because the sure the barn would shade a portion of it which would be great for some shade but plants we may not bring in quite as many i think we have a better um like contacts to yeah. get in get things in through the year fresh instead of trying to keep them nice through our weather yeah, right and i think that we should pare that down big time yeah and not hold on to so many plants right because you you can only work through so many at a time right um but yeah, I like that idea a lot. Yes, let's do it. Sue said, thank you for sharing. Sometimes we learn as much from the fails as we do from the successes. And isn't that the truth? I think that I can figure out a plant so much better or I learn about that plant um, so much more if I fail with it first um, before I succeed with it. Um, and we all just have that. And that's part of the thing. Erin, this video is actually, was this your idea? Or was this Ken's idea? It was one of your guys' ideas. You know what? It was, um, so I said we should do a video of like eight, uh, not eight, but just garden disappointments this uh -huh. year. And then I was talking with Ken. Who's our he, editor. Who's our editor. Yeah. He was like, you know what? You need to title it Fails. He goes, that's what everybody calls everything. <laughs> And that's like the, the lingo. So I said, okay, that's a, probably a good idea. We'll call it Garden Fails. Well, I remember when you uh, were starting to talk to me about it, you were, you were like, I have this idea. You're not going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to want to talk about it. But I think it would be good. And I agree um, because it is encouraging to see where other people are struggling. And not that you want to see other people struggle. That's not the point. It's the point is, is that we're all in the same but boat. boat. <laughs> And we all struggle. We all have things, whether it be, it, it might be something different. Misery loves company. Yeah, it's very true. You just and want it, to feel like you're not alone. And sometimes, I'm not going to lie, like this year, I there were a couple moments where I was big time discouraged about our space. Because like while there's a ton of fun, exciting things, there's a lot of scabs right now. There's a lot, that's a gross word, isn't it? <laughs> I don't like that word. Forget I said that word. Um, there's just a lot of yuck about it too. There's a lot that's not finished. There's a lot of dust. There's a lot of dirt. There's a lot that I know it's gonna be beautiful in the end, but I don't have the plants to do it yet. Or we haven't had the time to do it yet. Or we can't figure out the freaking water in this part of the garden. Or we have something dying over here. And there's or just Or you been, haven't designed it yet. Or haven't designed it yet. Or the freaking spruce falls down. <laughs> or something, you know, it's just like, <gasps> you have those moments where you're like, 
nothing's good. No, <laughs> nothing's good. Heads are falling off. <laughs> nothing's good in our garden right now. And I think we all have those moments. And like, especially when it's weather related and you cannot do a dang thing <laughs> to fix it. Like you, I can't make the weather be nicer. I could not make the 108 and 104 degree temperatures come down. We just had to like make it through it. And I think a lot of us deal with that. And there's times where we feel really great about our space and times where we're just like, oh. <laughs> Like, why do I do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's completely natural. And I think it's good to talk about it. Not all the time, but occasionally. One fail video a year. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, the comment goes on to say, I'm curious after your comment about following other garden channels, can you share some of the ones you follow? Well, of course, there's like the Impatient Gardener. I talk about Erin all the, all the time. We reference her videos because I think she's got a really pretty kind of cottage style. I don't know if that's what she would call her her, her yeah. style. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a touch of formality in it, um, but she deals with some of the things that I don't deal with, like, like pe uh, animal pests, <laughs> like oh, yeah. deer and, and rabbits and things like that that we don't get the pressure from those type of animals. So you can get some really good insight from her. I like Klaus Dalby, of course, from Denmark. Um, we've introduced him on our channel before to you guys. Um, I've done a, a live chat with him. I don't do live chats. I don't do those kinds of things on Instagram, but I was um, happy to be included in one of his. There's also Linda Vodder, beautiful garden, beautiful topiary. Um, and we've you know been able to chat and, and get to know her a little bit throughout the years. Um, Kevin, of course, the Epic Gardening channel, he, um, does something different than what we do, which I always love. I love to watch people who do something completely different than what I do because it's refreshing to me. And he does like focuses on organic gardening, urban gardening, food production. But I think it's one of his goals to like grow all the plants. Like let's try growing everything. Let me get experience with everything. And he's really, um, really great with a younger audience. And that's fun to see too. Um, because, you know, gardening can tend to be an older audience sort of thing, but I think especially in the last couple of years, we've had such an influx of younger people show an interest because, you know, you're at home, you know, going to cultivate something different. Uh, we want to be more self-sufficient, grow our own food, know where it's coming from, and I think that's a huge movement um, that has increased the years exponentially the last couple of years, and Kevin speaks to that generation, I think, better than I do. For sure. I mean, I do a lot of food production, but I focus heavily on the aesthetic side of things because that's what makes me happy and feeds feeds my soul. Yeah. Um, but I think it's good to have all those different voices out there. And there's probably more that I'm completely forgetting about. You know, I'm, I've been really um, happy to see uh, Jenny and Jerry. Oh, Creekside Nursery. Creekside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, it seems like they're connecting with a lot of people and mm -hmm. a lot of people are finding a lot of value in, mm -hmm. in the content they're well, they putting out. Well, they own a garden the, center. They've got a different yeah. perspective. And while my parents own a garden center, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, well, they grow. I mean, Jenny and Jerry actually grow a lot of the right. stuff that they sell, which is cool. Like um, grow it in terms of growing it before it's nursery retail ready. Yeah. yeah. And they're in the South. So they deal with a t completely different growing climate than we do. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the people that I actually like, I do a lot more following and a lot more, um, like I don't watch a ton of YouTube, but I watch, which seems kind of weird, but it's just, if you're doing YouTube and making as many videos as we do, you don't have a lot of time really to dedicate to watching a lot of videos. I do a lot of my following on Instagram and to be completely honest with you, I don't even know a lot of the names. You could go look at who I follow. Um, but like I'll, I know the look of their account and I'll see a pretty picture and I'll follow some, some account because I'll see a beautiful picture, landscape picture, and then I'll click into that picture and look at the rest of their gallery and be like, oh yeah, this is, this is inspiring to me. I'll follow and kind of just forget what the name is, but I know a lot of estate gardeners, a lot of um, gardeners over in, the, in Europe, um, they have a lot of experience and a lot of history and a lot of gorgeous spaces that Aaron always, you always kind of say like, you want your garden to look like one of their gardens, but you, <laughs> like he tries to prep me. Like we won't get that here in Eastern Oregon. We are high desert. You won't get that without rain or mild climate. And I know, I know I won't get that, <laughs> but we can try. <laughs> Anyway, that was a long answer. Joyce said, is it me or does that little wire spruce have a bit of a lean to it? Little wire, oh, the spruce in the wire basket. Uh, maybe digging it up and replanting it isn't a bad idea. Yeah, I noticed that when I watched the video back and I don't know if it was the angle we were shooting it from because I looked this morning and it looks straight from the front. Yeah, it depends on which angle you're looking. Uh, some trees at. have a wonk, kind of a wonk to them and you have to decide what side you want to have look wonky and what side you want to have look straight. I think it's okay, but I think it's something to address. I noticed that and I also noticed my pants. They were so dirty. I had done some planting out in the cut flower garden and I, it's so soft out there that I don't use a kneeling, kneeling pad. pad. I just get my legs right down in the 
in this case wet dirt and I got them completely covered in mud and that's how I shot this whole video because I completely I don't think about changing my pants middle of the day um, Natalie said thank you for sharing I've heard you mention on several videos that you might not stay at your current property do you have plans on moving in the future no not really I mean we talk about it as a possibility at some point well every time we lose a tree in the wind or yeah, you we're know done. like discouraged we're done. yeah <laughs> pack it up <laughs> You know, and I think we also keep our head on a swivel in terms of knowing that YouTube may not last forever. Yeah. And so we're always just thinking to ourselves, you know, we're realists. Yeah. Big like, time. There could come a day like we never want to be so secure that, you know, like maybe we would be forced to sell this property because it's a large property. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we would need to downsize or, mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. Or maybe we want to downsize. Maybe we'd want More to downsize. Yeah. yeah. Like, but you ultimately, I mean, unless something big happens in our lives, we'll be here forever. Yeah. You know, the more stuff we do, of course, like you put in a Hartley. Yeah. How are you going to leave that? Uh, we know all of our neighbors and they're all wonderful people. Uh, you know, everything that we do that makes this property more our own and every year that we get see more growth on trees and stuff like that. I mean, that that's a big deal, too. Yeah. You know, all of those things. And I almost can't imagine we've had both kids in this house. So that would be hard, yeah. even though, you know, every house that you're at, I think there are things you love about it and things that you don't. Um, anyway, we're figuring it out here. Yeah. And all of our immediate family is in the area. Most of our, just our parents though, our parents are the, both sets of our parents are still here in Ontario. Um, all the rest of our family is over toward Boise, which I would, I don't want to move over there. A lot of traffic. Moving into Idaho wouldn't be bad, but moving over toward Boise, like the climate really doesn't change much. And the traffic is so horrible and that area is growing so fast that I just really don't have an the interest. The median house price in Boise, I believe it's 600000 now. Can you believe that? We couldn't afford to move over there. We'd <laughs> have to like, because we're a little bit more protected. Like our, our area, properties have risen quite a bit, but we're more in a bubble than they are. Or yeah. we stay a little bit more, well. Yeah, I don't feel like Boise is as much point, of a bubble because people are just moving there in droves. Yeah. Because it's, it's pretty temperate. It's a nice place to live. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, the mountains and everything. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things to do outside. I think that area is going to change, though. Yeah, it will. In the next five or ten years with the influx. Of people. Yeah, yeah. from other states. I think things will change a bit. Yeah. So I think, I don't know, we're good here. Yeah. And I like it here. I mean... There's good and bad about everything. Last one. Prana said, wouldn't mulching around the tomatoes have helped with at least some of the dust and moisture loss? Yeah, of course it would. <laughs> but did I do it? No, I didn't. I just kind of tossed them out there. But that's what I did with my tomatoes last year. But the difference is I did not prune on those heavily. I did it like a couple of times, but I let them get huge and massive before I actually did my first big prune. And I think that's maybe what kept them from being damaged or suffering as much because they had so much leaf canopy to kind of protect themselves these poor ones just don't so anyway that is it for today's video kind of a long i always say that every week this is a long one i think it is a long one today is it? well i'll bet my, it's i'll bet it's decently over an hour my mic woo, has been going for an hour and 52 minutes oh ken i'm sorry we weren't recording that whole time though no well a lot of it yeah yeah okay Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.